Today we will talk about the Japanese vending machine murderer. In the mid-1980s, who killed as many as 12 unsuspecting vending machine customers in Japan? Are you ready? Grab your coffee and headphones as we explore this bizarre crime that has never been caught. Vending machines are a big deal in Japan. They have a machine for everything from hot soup and pizza to lingerie, and of course drinks and everything that you could think of. There is a pay it forward thing in Japan where people buy an extra drink and leave it in the machine for the next thirsty customer passing by. Back in 1985, a company tried to promote its healthy tonic drink called Ornamen C. So they started a campaign. When you buy a drink from a vending machine, any drink, a free bottle of Orname and C rolls out too. Many of those free bottles would remain in the slots or on top of the vending machines. It was typical for the Japanese culture to leave unwanted drinks behind for someone else to enjoy. All of this creates the perfect conditions for one of the most brutal crimes in history. Unlike most serial killers out there, the vending machine killer didn't murder his victims face to face. The killer's weapon of choice was not a knife or a gun, but paraquat. A chemical often used against weeds and banned in over 32 countries due to its adverse effects. Murderers target innocent people by adding paraquat to soda bottles, placing them on top, near or inside vending machines, disguised as soda that has been paid for and left in dispensing bins. However, Oranaman C wasn't the only type of drink that the killer poisoned. Coke products were also laced with the deadly chemical paraquat. The murderer hoped that the bottle of Oranaman C left in the bin of a vending machine wouldn't cause suspicion and that someone would gladly take a free bottle of soda. The first victim of the paraquat murder was on April 30, 1985, a 45-year-old truck driver from Fukuyama, Hiroshima, who bought a drink from a vending machine. As his drink was being dispensed, he noticed a bottle of Oranaman C sitting on top of the machine. He took it. Soon, he fell ill. He was showing symptoms of severe poisoning and internal chemical burns. The medical staff couldn't do anything other than confirm what was the exact poison that was killing him. Tests show it's paraquat, which causes blisters and sinks quickly, burning the walls of blood vessels, even if it just touches the surface of your skin. If ingested, it burns holes in the throat and inflames the tissue around major blood vessels. It's deadly. At the time that Atsuka Pharmaceuticals was promoting Oranam and C to the public. This, along with the Japanese practice of leaving unwanted drinks on top of vending machines for the person who is strapped for cash, has led the truck driver and many others to let their guard down, a mistake that would prove to be fatal. The truck driver eventually died on May 30, 1985. Analysis of his vomit showed traces of paraquat. The police investigation led nowhere and the case went cold. Then, in September, it happened again. And again. A 52-year-old man in Osaka drank a free beverage from a vending machine on September 11 and died three days later. A 22-year-old college student in Mie took a free bottle and drank it home. He died two days later. By the end of September, three more people were poisoned and died in Fukui, Miyazaka, and Osaka. Four more people died in October. Two in November. All took free bottles, some on top of the vending machine, but most from the dispensing slot. A 17-year-old girl from Saitama who died on November 24 was the last victim. The killings have since stopped as news spread that the Japanese killer is on the loose and vending machine. Operators have begun issuing warnings telling buyers to avoid drinking any abandoned beverages found around, on top or in dispensing bins. Fortunately, the warnings worked and more murders were averted. Police worked around the clock to solve this case, but unfortunately, there were no leads. Because the killer chose vending machines located in low traffic areas, there were also no witnesses. Back in the 1980s, video surveillance wasn't as common as it is today. With no witnesses, no video surveillance, and no DNA evidence, the investigation was at a standstill. 
The police and investigators were also uncertain of the motive, as the victims were randomly chosen. The poisoned beverages were placed in a variety of locations, with no apparent connection between them. Unfortunately, due to the lack of evidence, the case eventually went cold, and the killer was never found. When ingestion, Paraquad destroys the body within hours, days or weeks. Unfortunately, once the poison has entered the kidneys, victims are unable to clear the poison from their system as it begins to circulate in the body. Paraquat poisoning can cause internal organs to shut down, one at a time. Once the toxin enters the lungs, it can severely affect oxygen saturation, leading to a condition called pulmonary fibrosis. Pulmonary fibrosis describes a group of lung diseases that affect the respiratory system. The disease thickens and scars lung tissue, affecting the alveoli air sacs found in the lungs and the connecting tissue. After a few hours, the lung damage worsened, the lung tissue hardened, preventing it from expanding, and when the lungs began to fill with fluid, it became difficult to breathe, causing the victim to drown. Since there were no leads to follow, the authorities were stumped. They had no clues left to look at, no trails to track down. There was only a string of poisonings, an energy drink, and a mysterious psychopath on the loose. The forensic technology of 1985 had been exhausted, and to this day, the identity of the vending machine killer remains a mystery.